Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Foundation Level Certification. We are in Chapter 6 talking about test tools and today we shall be looking at some of the sample questions from this chapter and uh, understand how exactly we can answer the questions from here. So the very first question coming in from this particular chapter is that is which test activity does a test preparation tool support i think uh, it's more of like which particular phase is being supported by this particular tool that is test data preparation tool and all we are trying to understand here is that sometime we may not need something to be really remembered from a particular chapter but however if you remember things from the previous chapter also you could very well answer that so all we have to do is as we may not be aware of where exactly test data preparation tool is used in which particular phase all I have to correlate back is to the test process which is our chapter one and all that we have to do is get into that particular phase where the test data preparation happens so if I have to quickly recall and help you learn and understand about it the test design phase is where we identify the test data which is required for the executions and test implementation phase is the phase where you prepare the data and that's what makes it very clear that what should be the phase where test data preparation tool will be helpful to the team in order to prepare the required data sets and that's where if you look at the options we have options as test monitoring and control of course monitoring and control is a phase where we do consistent monitoring and taking control actions throughout the life cycle the second option here is the test analysis and as we do understand analysis is more about reviewing the work products analyzing the test basis but does not talk about data preparation however if i come to option c which is test implementation is absolutely the phase where we do the test data preparation and prior to that there is a phase which is test design which basically talks about identifying the test data requirements and the option D here is certainly test completion and by then the project is completed. All we do is maintain the change request, hand over the instances, environments, etc. to another team or even sit down and gather the lessons learned together. So in that context put together, our right answer here should be C, that is test implementation, is the right answer where the test data preparation tool would be helpful and supportive. Moving on to the next question and the next question is a slightly tricky one. Let's have a look here which item correctly identifies a potential risk of performing test automation. So indirectly all they're trying to ask you is which one of the following option is a risk of using test tools or test automation tools in the organization. So all we have to do is recall the benefits and the risk involved in it and then start looking at the options because sometimes the options may not be very straightforward and they would be twisting the words around to just make you confuse a little bit so that you can just not get the right answer in first go so let's start reading the options here the option a says it may introduce unknown regression in the production now unknown regression in the production is not a risk related to test tool it is more of like every frequent update which you make every kind of fixes which you do in the production could introduce regression so update upgrades are something which are triggers for these particular regressions being introduced into production but not a test tool test tool basically helps you minimizing your manual efforts on test activities thus this is not a risk which is introduced by the tool so a is not a risk indeed not a benefit as well thus it goes into more of like it is something related to updates and upgrades which introduces regression so a is not a good candidate when i look at option b sufficient efforts to maintain testware may not be properly allocated if you remember in our risk discussion we told you that it is equally important for the manager to take care of cost time and effort in order to manage introduce and take care of the tools so that's where the asset allocation or asset management or the testware management is a crucial part of the test tool management altogether if in case you do not have proper resources to do that or well-defined guidelines for it you will certainly have a risk involved in using the test tool and that's where this looks a little appropriate option uh, compared to a but let's cross check with c and d as well the option c here says Testing tools and associated testware may not be sufficiently relied upon. Now, there is a word here. If you remember, you can very well correlate with one of the risks which said uh, not too much of reliance on the tool. But too much and sufficient is two different things, right? 
we gave you an example of automated washing machine but we do rely on automatic washing machine up to washing but not expecting over from the machine so over reliance is a risk but sufficient reliance is a need if i my tool doesn't do what it is supposed to do that's something which is supposed to be discarded and i don't have to use that tool at all but sufficient reliability is always a must for the tool in order to get started so yes this is not a risk sufficient reliability is always required otherwise i don't need a tool at all okay if i cannot rely on it at least sufficiently but over reliance is seen as a risk associated with that so let's look at the option d here option d says it may reduce the time allocated for manual testing that's obviously seen as a benefit of having a tool so given that this is a tool benefit that is it reduces the effort on the manual testing i cannot call it as a risk so in that context put together the right answer here is b sufficient efforts to maintain test wear may not be properly allocated is seen as a risk to using a test tool i think that pretty much clarifies all of us that what could be the type of questions we may be getting so that one way completes this entire series entire playlist of istqb foundation and covers all the chapters with the sample questions however we'll have one more short tutorial after this which would we'll talk about a summarization of this entire series the final touches the closing notes and the break up of all the questions and what we need to concentrate on so stay tuned for that so that's all from this particular tutorial team should you have anything else feel free to comment below i'm always there to address your queries and answer them well till then keep learning keep exploring keep understanding the context Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.